Yep. Thank you, and thank you everyone for having me. So, so I'm here sort of representing the start out, start up version of the publishing end of the scale. Um, and so we are very much in the beginnings of thinking about our ebook development and, and how we're expanding our models and working with our books. Um, and essentially that meant we've done a lot of research and tried to think a little bit about what's working, what isn't. Um, and unfortunately, for better or worse, we reached the same conclusion sort of that Catherine has found, which is the way we're selling our books or displaying our books just isn't working. Um, and there's a lot above all we can learn from journals. So um, I would start out by saying that, um, you know, so we're sort of the little engine that could approach to what would be our ideal, and, and but what we can learn and sort of how we then um, hope to sort of see those realized. And of course, it ends with a rather large to-do list. So. Um, <laughs> I'll start, yeah, thank you. So I think ultimately, um, I see this very much as an interplay of three factors. It was very much the talk of availability, um, just make the books available, just digitize them, or, or maybe not so well as, as we've heard. Um, and then, then, of course, they'll come. Um, then it was discoverability, make the books discoverable, and then, and then people will come, researchers, sales. Um, and then um, we discovered, however, it's not that easy, because once they come, the question is functionality. What are they doing once they find your book? And what we've found is we're very bad, as we've heard, of encouraging people not just to work with that book, but then to work beyond that book and to sort of move beyond those areas and stay and look around. You think that they'll, they'll, they just need to come to your website and then they'll love everything you publish and they'll never leave, right? <laughs> Um, and obviously these have big implications for sales, profiles, citations, I mean this is a sort of a whole trifecta of, of, of in, as I said, an interplay of factors that I think we can't sort of have one without the other. So our focus then became very much, well, still availability, um, discoverability, but then above all sort of in the end it turns out functionality played a, lot, a much bigger role in terms of how we're successful in what we're doing. Um, so, if, so before sort of airing our dirty laundry, I will say that there are some positives. So I think there are some things that are saying, what is working? Um, you know, we're, we're still small and we're totally independent in social sciences, humanities, in monograph, books, um, doing everything university presses do without any institutional support. Um, so, but things are, you know, working seem to be working well. We have a strong profile in our core subjects. Our authors seem to like us and like working with us. Um, and, you know, we're seeing sort of very slow improvements. Um, our user engagement is up. We do, I mean, for us, we've found social media and um, any sort of web-based work that we can do of great leveling factor given the resources. I mean, we're 20 people um, across two offices. So we're a very small operation, but we do about 130 books a year and 40 journals, so we have a fair amount of content. Um, and we found essentially what's working is applying this journal's mindset to books. So sort of there was a scholarly kitchen article from a few years ago that was the um, springboard for this panel, and there there was the talk of a chapter economy and sort of how we can really be working and doing what we do very well in journals to drive traffic and to drive interest and to really create pieces out of our books and to use that to really get people to come to us. Um, so we've been working on that and that has a large impact also in site design, which I've italicized because it's a work in progress. <laughs> so what's not working? As, well, I guess what's working still, I think that's, are we still working on this? <coughs> yeah, so um, the chapter economy, so what's working? So this is sort of an idea of we're doing a lot more now to really uncover and use books and really use the content within the books to drive traffic and to make, make them more discoverable. So what you'll see here are some examples of how when we're working with um, book outreach, when we do a chapter promo, you can see obviously a big tick, but then above all, not just a big tick, but a boost um, in terms of obviously social media and, and also very active authors. Um, it's not just good enough, it's, it's great to make them free, but you also need to do something with them and boost them and work with them. So just sort of finding ways that we can just provide piecemeals. I mean, with a book, I think we've been very sort of hesitant to give away the book and to think about them in this one sort of encased um, piece. So we're trying to think a little bit again, applying a journal's mentality, which is what we do on the journal side all the time. We make journal articles freely available, we promote them tied to 
commemorative days or events or, or what have you. And chapters are just as um, available to do that. Um, so, so here you can see an example. I mean, for us, from a technological point of view, making chapters free, the way we do it is a bit cumbersome. So it's not what we do so much. But as you can see here, although they were 3% of posts, um, they still accounted for a fair amount of the engagement we had, in fact, double. So there was really sort of, it really does work in terms of what we're doing, but we're not giving away the whole house. I mean, there's, these are very selectively, um, chapters made available in very selective forms. Um, but then the question is, so that all sounds great, but then what's not working? And what we're finding is user retention is pretty bad. So here's, here's our full-on dirty laundry in terms of what we've seen when we did an analysis. Because what we were finding is we have all this engagement, we're growing, um, but what's happening when they reach our site? And this was sort of using this um, analysis to then think a little bit about, as we launch an ebooks platform, how do we want that ebook platform to look? Um, and and what, what was the information that our users were telling us once they got to our site? So doing a lot of Google Analytics and sort of looking exactly at um, what happened once they engaged. And what you can see here is quite horrifying bounce rates on the book side, um, rather average bounce rates on the journal side. Um, one of the biggest elements of that is the organic search, which is the main driving force to our book site. Um, and organic searches essentially are not your friend because they're finding you often for all the wrong reasons. Um, and, and obviously referral, Google Scholar is key there. And, and, um, but we found generally still is, again, from the referral point of view, once they find you, um, is that good enough? So if you go on to the next slide, you'll see again sort of what then the stages of interaction once they reach our site. So here you can see on the journal side, we have a much stronger Again, because of the referral um, uh, inbound into our uh, website, you see a much stronger uh, stage going on to the next stage. So these are the steps of interaction into the website, so how far they're going in before they exit. Um, this is of those who haven't bounced out on the sort of first, first hit. So as you can see here on the journal side, A, that we have a much better chance of them getting, getting them further in. And once they're in, then what happens? On the book side, we're just we're not good. Um, and this speaks again to the points that Catherine was making. So we were trying to look at this and discover what what is this, and again speaking to the point of functionality. So, you know, our books are available, they found us, but now what? Why why are we not retaining them and, and why are the sales then not reflecting what is otherwise a um, really strong activity? And I should note that we found, we did then also did various analyses of sort of what the next steps are, what are they doing once they're on their site. They're going to the search, um, search functionality, so they're going to the search button. They're going to series, so series, uh, we have a list of all of our series, was a big then sort of next step. And then About Us was always one of the top um, next steps for us. So they clearly have no idea who we are and wonder who the hell these people are publishing these sort of very niche weird books. So uh, yeah, so it's always, it was a surprise. So then we decided, with, so we thought, what is it? Why is it that on, on the journal side, we're relatively um, more successful? Um, and it boiled a lot down to, I think, all of the points that Catherine was making. It's, it's functionality. And, and really, as you can see here by the blue arrows, these are what I would call sort of very focused, um, targeted ways of encouraging people with one easy click to now move on. So we're sort of guiding the reader of where they want to go next. They've seen this article by Marilyn Strether and they think it's a great article, but, and so what else? What, they can click on her name to see what else she's published on our site. They can click on the keywords to see um, what else is on the, in that area. Um, they can click, they can go throughout the TOC of the journal. They can go up and look at the journal to see any other issues, any volumes. So there's a lot of one-click action here, and, and sort of we're, we're guiding the reader to many places with very little, um, with very little sort of work on their part. We've done a lot of the work for them. So then if you go to our books page, you'll sort of see where the problems begin. Um, so this was then looking at our book site to try and decide. And again, the blue arrows, you'll see right now the way the site looks. There are very few places that they can very easily now go to next. I mean, they found our book. Maybe they think it's interesting. Maybe they don't want to buy it because it's a library, a $90 library book, and they get sticker shock. Um, but they find the topic interesting. 
but so they so as we found the search the search key was the sort of the next big step but <laughs> otherwise there were very little places for them to go if we want to keep them on the site and to keep them looking on the list so maybe that book isn't for them but maybe as I said it sparked interest and they want to keep looking around so this is what I would term sort of very much passive this is a very passive site that we have and so what we're finding is I think um, as we think about our next models um, and how we need to be thinking about our book site and how we work with our book users is really to create more active engagement where we're doing far more work to help them stay and to help them keep not only maybe if they don't buy this book, to then keep coming back, keep finding more books, um, and, and using them. And as you say, I mean, I think it doesn't work here. If you scroll down, there's a TOC. I mean, on the left-hand side, you can click down, and it jumps down. So there are these sort of elements that break out. But, but otherwise, we're definitely finding that we need far more blue arrows on this page. So that then um, brings us to a, a to-do list. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of a site redesign is sort of one of the easy steps, but the question is, especially when we're a small staff, but any staff, sort of what is the next um, step in terms of internal workflows? Who owns what needs to happen? So clearly enhancing our metadata. So for us, keywords we found, are, and as we'll hear later on, um, are, are key. I mean, that's really an area where we think that we're really failing on the book side. Um, and overall, the metadata just needs more work. Um, but who owns that? Is that an editorial function? Is this something we need to get our authors to do um, when they're submitting their manuscripts? It's, it's hard enough to get them to provide high resolution images and permissions. Like how are they going to now do all this other stuff? Um, and so, I mean, to jump down, I mean, a lot of this is author education, turning sort of nice to haves to must haves. So thinking about an abstract and a chapter, which for journals, they're providing with no question. They know that as a journal, when you submit your journal article, you need your abstract, your bio, your keywords, and it's all in one, not necessarily neat package, but eventually it comes. Um, and on the book side, even though they'll have done that for an article maybe the day before, there's a real sort of um, block in terms of thinking about how and why that would be needed for um, a book. Keeping in mind, we also do a lot of edited collections. So, we have, uh, we have many sort of multi-authored um, titles. So um, obviously site design is then a big thing, um, pulling all these together and then better metrics. I think there's more we could do to sort of report and figure out exactly, not just usage, but citations. Um, and these are things we need to now really plug into the site and see to help us learn further um, what we can do to sort of track how users are coming and, and eventually in the end how they'll be buying our books.